But I looked on my, because I like learning on my Wikipedia, because I was wondering about fame, the nature of fame, because it's changed so much, you know? And uh, when I was young, it was one thing, and now it's a whole different thing. And uh, I, was, I was wondering how many people have been to the moon, like have actually walked on the moon. So I looked on my magic telephone and I found out only 14, 13 or 14, in the entire history of the world, you would think that would make you very, very famous. But no, the last guy who walked, now you'd think he would be famous for being the last guy to be on the moon. His name was Harrison Schmidt. Now who ever heard of him? Meanwhile, he goes all the way to the moon, hangs around there for a while, and comes back. He's not famous, but a girl with a giant ass is famous. When I was young, a man who went to the moon was famous. And a lady with a giant ass, you'd go, can you stand over there? Because this is... I one time worked for Otis Elevator. I don't know if you know who they are. Who? Otis Elevators. They make elevators. Okay. It's a company. And they wanted me to come up with a slogan. I thought I had a great one. Otis Elevators, they never let you down. But <laughs> when you're writing, you learn a lot of that. I went to a guy who was a big writer guy. He told me about things I didn't know about. Metaphors. You ever hear of them? He said, you got to use metaphors. I'm like, what's that? He's like, that's a thing. So a metaphor is like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? So he's like, that means you can take a person, you know, and you can give them all the information and everything, but it, he still has to be the one to absorb it himself. So I was like, well, why the fuck didn't you just say that? Like, what? <laughs> why do you have to put a horse into it? Like, what? You thought I was so stupid you needed to make it into some fable? Like, what? <laughs> a horse? You're so good at stand-up, you've gotten to the point. You look for jokes yeah. that have the same setup as the punchline. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yes, Can I you do, explain yes. that? I remember one time, for instance, I was on a Weekend Update, and there was this guy died, Jerry Rubin, and he was a yippie. Yes. Not a hippie, but a yippie. I remember my dad going, to, who is that, a goddamn hippie or a yippie? You know? And uh, so, he, so anyways, the joke on uh, a Weekend Update was, Yippie, Jerry Rubin died last week. Oh, I'm sorry, that should read, uh, Yippee Jerry Rubin died last week. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. My mistake completely. Just, I didn't read it right. Do I hear my dad's yeah. favorite joke? Yeah. He says, uh, he was from the farm, you know, and he says, uh, 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 a guy uh, a guy comes from the city, a city slicker comes and he buys a, uh, a farm and the farmer next door comes over to him and says, hey now, uh, would you like to come over to my house tonight? We're going to have a, a big shindig for you uh, because, you know, we're neighborly here and the city guy says, well, this is something that's... I really like, you know, that this is why I moved to the farm to have things like this, you know. Guy says it'll be a hell of a big party, you know. He goes, it'll be, you know, a little a little uh, drinking, a little fighting, a little fucking, you know. And the guy, city guy goes, well, that sounds good. What time should I be here? And the, and the farmer goes, anytime you like, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they would drink, then get in a fight, <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> It's your dad's favorite uh, job. That's my dad's favorite job. <laughs> right. and, who, and he also believed that this is a true story. I, when I was young, he told me that uh, gay people uh, showed up in the 50s. <laughs> they just showed up. In the no. 1950s were the first gay people. He believed that? He, he actually no didn't believe that. Wrong I guess because it's the first time that he encountered one or something. Because I went to this gay pride parade, and I saw in it there were these uh, old men and old ladies like with these uh, signs that said, We are proud of our gay son. You know? And so I was saying, that's an odd thing to be proud of, you know, because it's not an achievement, you know? It's not like something you work all your life to be gay or anything like that. And I, I just wondered, I just, I, I had a hard time believing that these 50, 60 year old men are actually bragging, you know, at work like they're, hey, uh, Bill, you know, uh, my kid, oh my God, we're proud of him, Johnny. He uh, uh, graduated from Harvard, you know, the first in his class, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, now he's articling over at a law firm and, uh, oh yeah, he loves cock. <laughs> you know? This kid. Do you think this would be funny, just as a practical joke, if you just wrote a suicide note and just blamed some random guy? 
You do think that would be... You know what I mean? You know, like your barber or something like that, you know? You go, you know, it's all Ralph Abernathy's fault. <laughs> because you know the police would be compelled to go to Abernathy's barber shop and go, have you ever heard of a fellow by the name of Norm MacDonald? I go, yeah, he'd come in every couple of months for a trim. Oh, okay, well, anyways, he took his life because of you. <laughs> wrote it here in this letter. Would you like to keep the... And then Ralph Abernathy would have to spend the rest of his life walking down. According to an obscure 14th century law, British Army Captain James Hewitt could be hanged for having an affair with Princess Diana. The punishment for having sex with Princess Diana is death. The punishment for having sex with Princess Anne is having sex with Princess Anne. <laughs> you know what else I like about the magic phone? Wikipedia. Oh, you ever use that? That's the best, man. It makes a democracy out of smartness. Everybody's equal now. You know, used to be a guy would go to school five, six years, and then he'd talk to me, and I'd be like, ah. But now, now it's all different. I got my magic phone in my pocket. So a guy will say to me, he'll go, hey, Norm, you ever hear of a fella that went by the name of Claude Monet? And I go, why, of course I have. I got to go to the bathroom. And I'm in there 20, 25 minutes, and I come back. I go, hey, uh, listen, uh, we were talking about Claude Monet, and I just want to say that, you know what I liked about him was his paintings. I liked the way he painted. He was a painter, and I loved how he used the paint to make paintings. And the guy goes, God damn, Norm, I've never been able to stump you in two years. I go, in what is considered a remarkably short period of time, the head of the Federal Advisory Board, Dr. Peter Melman, has given speedy approval to a controversial new anti-obesity drug. It should be noted, however, Dr. Melman's wife is a fat pig. I know you're from Canada. Yes, yes. And do you get rural back? Rural Canada. Deep, rural? deep rural Canada. And do you get back there much and, and see the old gang, the old, uh, old chums? God, yeah. You know, I grew up, we didn't know the things that you do, the city. City folks, yeah. I remember when my dad, when I was young, he took me to the first time we ever went to the city. And we saw an elevator, and by God, my dad didn't know what it was, and I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And we see the doors, it was just magic doors to us, that's what my dad called it. The doors opened, and a big, fat, old, ugly woman in a wheelchair got in. Mm -hmm. And then the doors closed. And then the doors opened again, and a beautiful blonde walks out. And my dad says, quick, go get your mother. Now, <laughs> I mean, that guy was a, oh, listen, he was a dirty dog, but he was a good man. He's too, a good you know? man, uh-huh. When people commit suicide, no one ever understands, you know what I mean? People commit suicide, people go, I don't, I don't understand why. And I go, you don't? <laughs> well, you live in a cotton candy house or something? What the fuck? You don't know about life? How it only disappoints and gets worse and worse until it ends in a catastrophe? What the fuck? There's two reasons guys will hang themselves from the neck. One is, like we said, to escape this worthless masquerade of a life we pretend we have. And the second reason we hang ourselves from the neck is to whack off. These guys... I don't understand. It's called autoerotic asphyxiation. It's a big fancy word, but it's a filthy thing. And uh, this is my problem with it. The risk-reward is not good.